We are back on Inside Tennessee this morning, welcoming in our panel, Susan Richardson Williams, who runs her own PR firm and is a Republican. Don Bosch runs his own law firm. He is a Democrat. Welcome to both of you, as well as the Democratic Senate candidate, Mark Bradshaw. Susan, you have the floor. I do, thank you. Um, thank you for being on our show, first of all. Um, I wanna ask a political question. You. Um, you raised $8,000 during the primary and you beat the guy that everybody thought was going to win who spent a million and a half dollars or something like that. How did you do it, first of all? How did you win? How did you pull that upset off? Well, that's part of our secret sauce that's going to take us through the general. Uh, but to put it simply, uh, the way we did it was relational politics. Voters are just don't vote individually. They vote with their families and in communities, especially when there are issues that people have been trying to address at the federal level that hadn't been getting attention that it should. Well, um, it was quite a feat. Uh, congratulations to you. I and would it was like to ask $27,000 that we have updated the report. So it wasn't $8,000. Okay. That's probably <laughs> okay, good. a Tennessee tall tale from here on out. <laughs> good to know. Um, well, I thought health care healthcare is one of the concerns that you have mentioned. And certainly it is something that all of us are dealing with right now during this pandemic. Um, if you're elected to the Senate, what would you do? Would you fight to keep Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act? Or would you want to see some changes made as well? The American Portable Care Act in its original form was supposed to be universal health care. And it was negotiated it away and, until we have it on the market as we see now. And so when we look, think about health care, health care is a commodity. Commodity is not working. And so we have to make sure that every American has not only access uh, physically to a health care facility, but also uh, financially. Um, and so that means that we can move to a single payer system where everyone can actually go to the doctor, especially in a pandemic. We all agree, no matter who you are or how you got here at this point, in order for all of us to get healthier and get past the pandemic, everyone needs patient-centered health care where the health outcomes drive the dollars instead of people being sick. And Ms. Bradshaw, as we move to Don Bosch, following up on that, do you see health care as a right in this country or a privilege? Healthcare is a right. Marquita, well, first of all, uh, congratulations. Uh, happy to see new faces and new people come uh, to the forefront of our party. And uh, like Susan said, I think it surprised a lot of people that uh, you won and won as convincingly as you did. Um, you know, a number of years ago, I, I worked with Harold Ford Jr. and his effort uh, to beat Bob Corker to become our next senator. And, and one of the things I noted that, that Harold did very well is he was not afraid of going into the den of the lions, the heart of Republican country, his votes. That's something that you think you will need to do since you did such a good job in terms of door knocking and, as you put it, relationship-driven uh, politics. Is that something you're prepared to do to try to win over some moderate and even Republican voters? We started that in the primary, so that's not anything new. We've been um, having voters uh, focus on the American core principles that we all agree on when it comes to the environment, education, and building an economy around working families. And so that's what's important, and that's what's been bringing Republicans over to vote, vote for uh, Marquita Bradshaw is the fact that I'm listening and that I've already started the conversations before now. One of the things Good. you and talked much, about in free, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Don. I was going to say, I, I know you did this uh, on the primary with what would be considered a shoestring budget, and actually I think that's fabulous. We have way too much money in politics, but how much money do you think you need to raise in order to be successful against what's clearly going to be a heavily funded Republican challenge? Well, I hope you saw in the primary to know whatever money we raise will make us successful in the general. But however, we have we're on track for a budget to raise four million dollars. Are you getting are you getting 
are you getting money from outside sources? I assume the Democrat National Committee and, and some of the Democrat Senate Committee uh, would be supporting you. Have you received outside money from those groups yet? The, the money we have received have mostly come from working families. We have had 21, no, 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 as of this morning, 22,000 individual donors that have given any uh, any amount uh, that's that's actually legally, uh, but most of them um, around, the average amount is around $30. I want to get back to policy real quickly and bring up something you've talked about, Ms. Bradshaw, and that is a progressive tax structure. For our viewers who don't know what that is, could you explain what you think our tax system should look like in this country? Well, to simply put it, we have ultra-rich corporations that are not paying their fair share in taxes. And it's making it an unfair and, and feel for small business owners. And so that's one thing about me is that I believe in fairness. And so we have to be able to make sure that we're not paying companies to outsource jobs out, out of America um, and then uh, giving them subsidies or corporate welfare. So we have to address that issue. And then we have to tax the ultra rich. And so would you change the tax rate for individuals? It would be changed based on a formula where the rich pay their fair share. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Back with more questions from Don and Susan for McQuita Bradshaw right after this.